I'm Jane Gingrich. I'm the head of music at Southwood Secondary School. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here today. Um, I know when I had my, my site visit uh, at the school last week when you were rolling out the Chromebooks, we had a really interesting conversation, and I appreciate you connecting again today to um, sort of recapture um, what I thought was a very interesting context to educational change. So I thought it might be interesting to, as a start, um, sort of revisit that conversation we had around the context of music education sort of then and now, as I recall we were talking in the hall. Yeah. Okay. So then it was very um, performance-based in a different way. Um, large group ensemble, uh, old, how we were taught. So you went in, you uh, did your music together, uh, left the classroom, practiced the music, came back, performed, um, did theory all together from the board, and uh, pencil to paper, all of those types of things. So that was then. Um, and you had a group of kids that enjoyed being together and liked to do large group things. Now it's a little different. A lot of the kids come into class being very insular and not as full ensemble oriented. So you can give that to them, that experience to them. But they also uh, are in need of small or individual type of performance. We also see a lot more anxiety with students now. And so we have to nurture ways that live performance or solo performance is not a venue for some of our kids. So we have to look for other ways in which to uh, reach them with music, still touch them with music, but not in that global sense anymore. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now in, in terms of the, the actual Chromebook rollout mm -hmm. and, and the preparation that I expect happened last spring and yeah. chug, chugging along yeah. towards the 16-17 the school year, we recognize that everybody's in a, a place in terms of their own personal learning. So for you, is this something, an initiative that, that pushed and changed your practice or... Um, how was that experience for you? Oh, definitely it's something that um, technology would not be the first thing I would go to in life, but I know it's a necessary thing to learn. So um, any time, like I have gone to CADSI camp in the past, and I have had notation programs on PCs and on Mac mm -hmm. and done things. So um, the Chromebooks are yet another way to, to work technology in. English is my other area, so I'd already incorporated it into essay writing when I taught English the last time. So I had familiarity setting up a classroom, but now I can look for the music tools that help me. And so that is exciting because there are a lot of things out there that before you had to get out your tape recorder and your little uh, cassettes and um, the quality was bad and to redo it again was a bit of a pain or the multi microphones that you had to set up in your room to just get a recording of your group performing one piece now you can just press record and it's there instantaneously the kids tossing their phones into the middle or now just clicking on their um, you know, the Chromebooks when we're performing or working on something and, and they want to practice with the group. Now they just put on their technology, it's basically is in the middle of the floor and they record their um, version so they can practice at home. So I think it's encouraged more, um, more recording, more digitizing, but then, yeah, it's, made me, it's pushed me to think of how else can I use it to help me and help them. Um, not just, I need to use it, so let's force it. It's actually uh, helping me. Right. So, so. <laughs> um, a, a question on that point then. We've, as part of this transition, moved from you had maybe a desktop or two in your room or, or none. you might, or none, <laughs> none. <laughs> or you might go down the hall to, to the, the lab, lab under, yeah. under certain circumstances. So, having the Chromebooks now where the kids are equipped with a day-to-day -day tool, how has that changed things? Well, I, I think that's going to, especially when we see the four years um, in the multi-level class I was telling you about, my nines are very good at bringing them, I can incorporate it right in. The other ones, it's hard because each um, Google comes on a phone very differently than it does on some of the other devices. So in the Chromebook, it's set up very similarly to what I have, but on some of the others, it's not as user-friendly. So. Um, I see it being a really good tool by the time we roll it out to all four years. So it's a, a little um, smattered 
uh, in my class that's tiered. Sure, because you're yeah. teaching a mixed group. I'm teaching a mixed group, yeah. but all my nines, it's great because everything is the same for them. And they're right. very good at doing okay. that. So. And how do you see the benefits of this? Well, uh, for me, again, with the size change and the fact that not as many kids take, um, can take the option areas with all the restrictions that have been put on, and we're, yeah, our school size is small, um, our program is small. And uh, so, you know, I got upset for maybe five minutes about it last year, and then I had to look at, okay, how can I make this work? And I can still provide a separate course for each one of those ki kids, like grade 12s, grade 11s, grade 10s, grade 9s, um, within the context of having them all together. And uh, the Chromebook has helped me immensely. Um, the theory lessons I've subdivided and put in each of their grades, so it's me teaching that with the help of my media tech last year. We recorded 20 lessons of theory that covers basically the beginning to the end of 12. And uh, I put them into the classroom, so they view those, they can see them again. I can see I have a grade 11 student that still hasn't mastered something. I just shoot the old videos to them. I can give them worksheets and then my time in class can be facilitating, checking in, making sure they're getting it rather than just always teaching. Right. Right? And then if a kid misses because they're away that day, they have the video. I don't have to have them in to teach them the lesson separately. Um, so they always have that. That's just one of the ways. Sure. And, of um, course, they would have access wherever they are. Yeah, Just need anytime. an inter internet connection yeah. at yeah. home, a friend, or here, library, yeah. whatever. Or come in here, and then they just watch it in here at lunch. Or, you know, I don't have to teach it. I just have to answer right. questions. So, you, so you're seeing your role has shifted into more of a coach facilitator. I am a coach facilitator. Much more like you are as a director, only giving them more freedom. Like, I think that's, you're releasing yourself a little bit from mm -hmm. having to be in charge. And, and uh, it's kind of like our practice. Do you just have choir to say what you want the song to be? Or are you getting input from the kids and creating something together? So I think, and actually teaching guitar has made me think more along the lines of being more collaborative. But I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure. It's not the band, this is what I say, this is what I do, go and that's it's it. Less direct. Less direct. More, more collaborative. Yeah. 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 No, that's an interesting shift and um, in my role it's interesting to talk to educators that have a different subject specialties and right. see how they're considering that same yeah. point within the context of their particular course material. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's be. very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you talked a lot about um, the differentiating, the leveraging technology, the different tool sets. Yeah. Um, share with me again what you were doing with uh, the accompaniments and so oh, on. Oh, right. Okay, so each of my kids are going to have separate, like, canons or vocalises or uh, testing material in the 9s, 10s, 11s, and 12s. And even in, within that, I like them to have choice. So what I do is I record the accompaniment parts. Like today, we just had our vocalise for our grade 12s. I recorded the accompaniment on uh, Vocaroo, which is on the um, Google mm -hmm. the free list. And so um, I was able to just put that link right into the classroom, and they have it to practice with any time they want to. And then they can even bring it up if we record. I usually do it live with them, because it's a lot better. Or if they have something they record, they can send it to me. It's just the audio, or we do the filming if it's, you know, if I want to see actual posture and things like that but it's helped a lot in that regard because you can um, just lay something down and then they can take it back because I can't be four places at once. No of course so. <laughs> but that, that sets the stage then excuse the pun yeah uh, for the students then to uh, do their own rehearsing and, yes. oh, and, for sure. or, or record a uh, yeah. you know at a moment in time they can self critique they can yes. get your input exactly. so you are sort of providing that environment then where there's ongoing regular feedback Definitely. but more on an individual basis rather than the large group. Right and so with the grade nines and tens and their vocal blog that they do for me a vocal journal basically every week and we just go back and forth on on their progress um, at midterm and then again toward finals they have to record part of their rehearsal at home and send it to me for feedback and so then I can say, you know, watch the posture, do this kind of thing, then it's a lot easier there too. Yeah, yeah. well that's fantastic. 
Well, it sounds like you've really uh, em embraced the new journey and you're looking Trying. at uh, creative <laughs> ways to leverage the technology uh, yeah. as, as part of the arts program here. Any final thoughts you'd like to share? No, just, no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm open to lots of things, so if people have any extra, you know, I'm always looking for new things, and it's always nice if somebody can show it to you instead of you trying to find it on your own, because that's probably the hardest part, is trying to find good quality things. But, I mean, there are some really good apps, but I'm still looking. <laughs> sure. Well, that's part of the learning, yeah, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And that's another great thing, really, yeah. teacher as part of the learning community. Oh, yeah, and the kids are great at bringing stuff in. I mean, if you you um, empower them to do some of this stuff, too, I mean, it's amazing. And any time along in the struggle that I've had trouble getting the projector, doing the connectors, anything like that, there's always some student that knows something more than me on that, and uh, they've been great. So. Okay, well, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. It's a great, wonderful journey. Thank yes, you. Yes, it is.